Hello and welcome to the WordPress Chick Podcast. Brought to you by the WPChick.com. WordPress explained for those of us who get headaches when we hear words like PHP and functions, but want to make money with their WordPress sites. No boring code snippets here. Just WordPress happiness made easy. Now, here's your host, Kim Doyle, the WordPress Chick. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the WordPress Chick Podcast. I'm your host, Kim Doyle, the WordPress Chick. Welcome to episode 154. This is take two. (laughs) I I had the fan on in the background, and I'm like, you know what? I don't know. It was more of a distraction (laughs) than it was feeling good. Welcome to summertime. This is episode 154. Like I mentioned, today, it's just the two of us. Or who else is, you know, listening to this? You and I. Let, let's go ahead and do it that way. Um, but today we're going to talk about building the machine first, strategic business growth for non douchey people. <laughs> I debated on that title. I liked it instantly. But then I thought, eh, is that too much? A friend said no. So here we are. Non douchey people that we are, we're going to jump into this. Um, I, this was one of those episodes that. You know, I, I've, I map out the show. Um, I've, I've probably got it mapped through September. Actually, the episodes like completely planned and interviews recorded, uploaded for editing, all that good stuff. It's the solo shows, though, where the topic is TBD, to be determined, right? And so I, I, I love the serendipitous effects of things falling into my lap to have a conversation about. So Hence, the build the machine first. And I I literally just heard that on a webinar, although I think it may have been a podcast um, from Shane Mila of Thrive Themes. They are launching a new podcast called Active Growth. Check that out in iTunes if you are a fan of their content, which I I totally am. Um, Obviously, I love their products, um, but they're brilliant at content and content marketing and conversions and all of that. Just real tangible tangible content that you can put into play, right? So I have followed the content on Thrive Themes. Well, I started following them as soon as I became a customer. And you guys, I can still picture <laughs> the the day that I saw the content builder in action. I was sitting on my couch in my other house. Um, and I want to say, I almost want to say it was before it was, it was winterish time because I had the fire going and it was kind of, eh, you know, evening, just kind of puttering on the laptop. And I see this demo of Thrive Content Builder in the Facebook news feed. And I was like, what is that? It was a page builder for WordPress. And I'm not saying that there weren't others before that, but it was the first time I'd connected with them and thought, oh my gosh. And, you know, I'd say the rest is history, but well, I'm going to go ahead and say it. The rest is history. I fell in love with their products. And more so, I I really fell in love with their content as well. It's one of the very few product sites that I read re- regularly. Yes, they do content around their products, but they also create a lot of content around marketing strategies in general, right? It's not just about do this with, with Thrive Leads, do this with Thrive Content Builder, do this with the quizzes. They talk about how everything works within your business and and, and um, what piece of the puzzle, essentially, that tool might be. However, they do case studies. They do a lot of instructional. It, it's just awesome. Anyways, so I was listening to, <laughs> circling back, I was listening to this webinar. It was to launch the Active Growth podcast. And I, I I fell in love because Shane is the one who said, build the machine first, right? And no doubt you guys have seen this in this space that people jump in, they're all gung ho, everything looks great, they start driving ads and, you know, paying for traffic with ads or whatever. And they're putting everything out everywhere and nothing is working, nothing's sticking, right? Um Maybe you've been that person. <laughs> I know a lot of people who've been there, myself included. But before we get into building the machine, I kind of wanted to talk about a few things that I see going on in the online, let's try that again, in the online <laughs> marketing space and what it means for us, aka non-douchey marketers, right? Um, <laughs> so the first thing 
that we will address is the BS, right? <laughs> and the post, it says, bye bye. So if you've not seen that Saturday Night Live skit, it was God, David Spade and Helen Hunt, up, up, bye, up, up, bye, right? <laughs> it's, I'm not going to go into it. This is not my own comedy hour, but uh, bye bye to the BS. Because, you know, obviously, there there's always going to be those ding dongs out there who make huge income claims, or they get caught up in the make money teaching you how to make money space, right? But they're not going to last long. You know, I talked with Troy Dean recently. Uh, if you guys haven't, I'll link to that episode in the, in the show notes. And but we were having this conversation, and he reminded me of something. I think many of us forget. If you've been online for a while, this is a really easy thing to forget. And what he had said to me was there are literally hundreds of thousands of people discovering WordPress for the very first time every day. So think about that for a minute, you guys. And obviously, WordPress is just an example in this case. There are hundreds of thousands of people just getting on to Pinterest. Maybe that's your thing. Or or writing about CSS, right? Or creating CSS tutorials. Or talking about Photoshop or health, or fitness, or or cooking, or a second career, whatever it is, you guys, there are tons of people out there who are just discovering what you do and would love to learn more. And I don't necessarily mean they're discovering you, but they've come across the thing you do. And then what happens, it, here's a great example, is when you become interested in something, okay, this is this, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm I'm like movie quotes are popping in my head. That was totally Lethal Weapon 3. Remember Joe Pesci? Okay, 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 okay. Anyways, when I started juicing, gosh, almost three years ago, um, I have natural juice. Like I mean, I juice guys like with a cold press juicer, green veggies, the whole nine yards. I was totally <laughs> the, I don't want to say anti-veggie person. I just didn't like a ton of fruits and vegetables. You know, I could count. <laughs> on one hand, probably uh, the stuff that I liked eating, maybe one hand with fruits, total 10 things, right? But one can only eat so much broccoli and apples. Um, so I had watched the movie uh, Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead with Joe Cross. I've done a couple juice fasts, for lack of a better word, where you're just strictly having juice. Uh, the longest I've gone is 14 days. Um, and I felt phenomenal. I really, it was amazing. Energy, skin, weight, everything felt great. Someone said to me once, well, why didn't you stick with it? I'm like, because I got pissed. I was in a crappy mood and I wanted a cheeseburger. <laughs> so there you have it. But my point is that when I got into juicing, I got into juicing. And I, I was reading books, reading websites, recipes, people who had had success with it. Um, I just started digging around. And there's still a few sites I follow. Like I said, I, I, I juice. I have juice every day. And I've upgraded the juice to a cold press juicer, you know, so I, I got into it, right? So think about that when people are finding your thing. And again, I don't necessarily mean you particularly specifically, right? It's, it's whatever it is you're teaching. So here's a great example is I've got um, a good friend of mine who is really targeting sort of the baby boomer generation, or people who want not just that age demographic, but it's sort of that, you know, reinventing yourself, like, okay, you've had this career, you've done this, and now you're going to do this. And so those people tend to have more life experience. So you may not be a boomer, you may be a Gen Xer like me. Um, or I think Gen Y is behind me, right? I, I don't know why, I wonder why millennials weren't called Gen Z, <laughs> just because it sounds dumb. I don't know. Anyways, so, you know, there, there are people that are just getting into this. So it's, it's, remembering that just because it's old news to you does not mean it's old news to somebody else. Okay, let's circle back to the uh, bye bye to the BS, right? Remember that there are all these new people coming on. And yes, there will be those completely smarmy people out there um, that are going to, here's another example. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting recording, you guys. I just feel like all these little things popping into my head, 12 ways sideways. Um, but a great example, I, I had Jason Hornung on the podcast, gosh, a year and a half, I've got to have him back on. One of my most favorite people, I am the president of his fan club, 
that I started <laughs> um, because of how he runs his business and what he does. It's a Facebook ad agency. I worked with him, great results, et cetera, et cetera. He had shared with me too many people that Jason, who had bought his course, because he's also got a course on Facebook ads. And then within two or three months had turned around and were claiming to be able to do that for somebody else, right? That all of a sudden they took his course and now they were the expert, right? So you're going to see a lot of those people in this space. And maybe some of those people had great results, who knows? Um, but I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> based on the the energy and time investment and cost, right? That Jason put in, there's no, I mean, he spent years really mastering that and, and getting a, a solid grasp on direct response marketing and understanding Facebook and the algorithms and it's all that good stuff. So there will always be those people who are going to jump in and decide that they can teach what they just learned. Now, I'm not saying you can't do that, but just be honest about where you're at with it, right? But but coming back to this point of people who just discover who you are and what you do, right? And they want to learn more. Think about what happens is there are tons of people who hit the web running and they've got a ton of enthusiasm because they've just discovered this thing, right? The internet. <laughs> and you know what I mean by that in terms of, wow, this is legitimate. People are really building substantial businesses. Um, but unfortunately, sometimes these people who are super excited and and they're committed, right? They come into this with commitment, uh, but they find the douchey marketers first. Then they get frustrated because the next thing they know, your next thing, I did just say that, the next thing, <laughs> next thing, you know, they have invested thousands of dollars, hundreds of hours, and quite possibly thousands of hours, but they haven't made a penny. They own more information products than they know what to do with. They haven't completed most of the information products they've purchased. And just a quick side note to this, there are plenty of these products, you know, these info products, whatever. I don't care if it's a, a $97 course or a 2000 Some of these products may be really great, but rarely are they a one-size-fits-all solution, nor are they the solution when you're getting started, Right. So what happens is these people end up on total overload. Just like, I've tried this, I've done this, I'm tired of dinking around with the blog, I bought this course, I watched this webinar, I listened to this podcast. I mean, it's a little crazy. And I love information. I love learning stuff. But I can totally see where somebody who's new to this space, and again, you guys, I'm not talking about somebody who wants to get into digital marketing as, as the, like that being the hub, the, the content, right? Again, you could be a food blogger, you could be teaching somebody um, how to be a race car driver, fencing, I don't know, whatever it is, right? But when you find there's this whole other world online, it's overwhelming. Um, I wish nothing more than for people to understand that creating a profitable online business takes work, it takes commitment, and it takes time. Can it happen faster than an offline business? Totally. In terms of speed, that depends on you. Although at the end of the day, I really believe it's not how quickly you do things. It's how consistently you do things. I'm going to say that again, because I think it bears repeating. It's not how quickly you do things. It's how consistently you do things. I finally connected the dots, you guys, with this a mm, year and a half ago. Um, and that is a tweet, by the way, in the post, <laughs> because it hit home. As much as I try not to give energy to regrets, oh my God, you guys, I wish I had gotten this lesson earlier. I wish that I had trusted what felt right in my gut when I was building my business and that I had had the strength to put blinders on when I came across shiny objects or the lifestyle images, you know, and not because everything was BS but because they're total distractions. Every time I went in a different direction or lost sight of the fundamentals, the things I knew I should have been doing, you guys, emailing, that ain't new. I literally just said ain't on my podcast. Hardly a new strategy. But I didn't maybe have the confidence. And I didn't when I started doing this almost daily email, which is pretty daily now. Um, I didn't have the confidence. I just stuck with it, you guys. But every time I went in a different direction, it delayed the results I wanted. 
So, you know me, I had to come up with a real life example, right? <sighs> nice ice cold water out of my hydro flask. I swear I love that thing. All right, so think about it. Let's say you decide you want to paint your house, or let's just pick painting a room for that matter. What do you think would happen if you start painting a wall? And before you finish painting that wall, then you go to Pinterest and you start looking at other paint colors. You see something that appears to look better. So you stop what you're doing and you go get a different color of paint and you start over, right? And then you do this 10 more times. You never see the end result. You never get the full picture of what that original color would look like in the room or on the house because you never completed the job. You never finished painting all the walls, brought your furniture back in, you know, put put your prints and stuff, your pictures back on, whatever it is, you never saw the end result. Now, don't get me wrong. Maybe this paints a far-fetched analogy, right? Because obviously you could do swatches and stuff, but there's, it's really different between painting, you know, a four inch by five inch little, you know, swatch on the wall versus seeing an entire wall in that color, right? Okay, let's, let's take it a step further. Let's say you do finish the paint job. Unless you're having a party or inviting people over, you'll never get the, wow, I love the paint color you chose, right? I mean, of course you painted the, the room for yourself, but to get that feedback, to get that validation, it still feels good. So can you imagine going through this process over and over and over again? At some point, you're just going to pick a freaking color. You're going to pick any color because you're so sick of painting that you would just want it done. This is what happens in business when you keep jumping from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. And you guys, there's also a time for letting things go before they're finished, but that's completely for another discussion. Because at the end of the day, who was I? I I do think I I mentioned this on a recent episode also. Um, There are, there are those things that, you know, you might jump from and, and you put it out there. But if you, if, if you finish it, and I really am not trying to get on a soapbox here about finishing what you start, but you're never going to, you're never going to get better. Oh, this is what I was starting to say. (laughs) I was having a conversation a couple months ago, you guys, and notice how I've said that a lot recently too. I was having a conversation. I am having a lot more conversations with people and it's making a significant difference in my business also for another episode. Um, but we were talking about um, people saying, oh, will this work? Is, is this going to work? If I do this, will this work? If I do this, will this work? Nobody nobody knows until you do it, right? There are strategies. There are, you can create all the, the K- KPIs that you want. You can have, well, oh, my cost per lead, my click through, you can have all the data you want, but it's going to mean nothing until you pull the trigger and put it out to the world, right? You have to, at some point, see something through to fruition and, and, and get that data. You know, I'm going through this with lead surveys, you guys. I'm recording this the day before. I'm going to have links at the end of the show too. Um, we, I've talked about the app before. This has been nerve wracking for me. I, I had a call last week with my therapist mentor. Um, she is both because I, I'm just like, Ugh, this pit in my stomach that I've been waking up with. And, and, you know, she just reminded me, kind of come back to self. And it, when you've done the work, and I'm going to get into all this, but you know, when you've done the work, at some point, you just, it's out of your hands, right? You do what you can do, you put your best foot forward, and then you have to friggin' let it go. All right, Kim's tangent. Let's push that aside for now. Let's get into building the machine first. And what I thought I would do is we're going to hit bullet points with this. Okay. And I just, I'm going to go in more detail, but again, all these bullets are in the show notes. I had three cups of coffee this morning. And you guys, when I talk about a cup of coffee, it's like a tall Starbucks tumbler. (laughs) So I'm like, I'm going to have a headache. I'm going to need some more water. Um, All right. Bullets on building the machine. The first thing, get clear in your business model. Services, products, whatever. And then you're going to do the same thing for your target audience. And hint on this, you guys, most people jump straight into the fun stuff, the colors, the logos, etc. So I am with each of these bullets, I want to give you something maybe you can sink your teeth into. 
I did this when I was working on the sales page for lead surveys. And I, I think I've talked to you guys before about, um, my, well, it's my, my confidence with copywriting. It is growing. I have a ton of fun writing content copy. It's something I have to work a lot harder on. So what I did with this, and I'm, I'm giving you this guideline as a test in terms of this getting clear what this looks like. This doesn't mean you just sit down and think one afternoon, take the, t- whether it's a pen and paper, a Google doc, whatever it is, start doing some brain dump, hit other sites, look at what they're doing, look at different messaging, all of that. So I did that with, with lead surveys. So I had a conversation, well, there it is again, <laughs> with a friend who has a much more solid grasp on copy and kind of where to start. And so I let him know what I was doing. And he said, start with your headline. He said, write as many headlines as you can. And I said, okay, I didn't, I, I'm not questioning it. Like, oh God, I got to write headlines. So I did, I opened a Google doc and I opened the co-schedule headline analyzer. And I think I came up with like 20 and then I had, I had one that hit, it got a decent score in co-schedule, which, you know, I kind of take that with a grain of salt because those headlines don't always win out if I do a split test. Um, so I started with like 20 headlines. Okay, great. So then it was like, all right, the next step was what's the problem we're solving? What's the problem? It's not about me. It's, it's not about what we're doing. So you guys, I ended up with three pages of notes of then going into the the features and the benefits and how is this solving this and who else is doing this. And then I went and looked at competitor sites and not that there's a direct competitor, but there are other opt-in services, right? We're doing more, of course. Um, but I went and looked at the messaging and the problems they were solving. And I was looking at their pricing and how they structured their, their, their different tiers and their FAQ, everything... You guys, this took me a couple days <laughs> because then my brain starts going like it's it's not a um, it's not an, a natural flow for me to do that. So I have to kind of process it. But the cool thing about that, and I know we're only on bullet one here, the cool thing about that process is this: I, I this was um, recent, and I thought, okay, I, I can't think any harder about this. I'm going to go um, float and read. It's my summer activity, and so I hopped in the pool and I grabbed a spiritual book because I thought I'm kind of on overload, right? Like your brain just gets like too much, too much. So I'm I'm reading this book and ideas started popping up left and right. And more than anything else, you guys, it was validation to just show up authentically. Meaning, you know, if I, if I try to write copy that is, um, What's the word? Conversion focused as opposed to people focused and what we are really focused on accomplishing with this tool, it's just not going to work. And so, boom, my point that was all getting clear on your business model, but taking the time to get clear, you guys, take the time to do this work pen and paper, Google Doc, whatever it is. Next thing, get your site up. Okay. And this is all under building the machine first, just to reiterate. If you can't afford to hire someone to do this, that is okay. Own that. It's going to take you longer. Be okay with that still. You can still start building your audience. This makes me cuckoo. The, I, I'm going to give another shout out to Marianne Manthe of Design Your Own Lovely Blog. Mary and I, Marianne and I connected on Twitter. Gosh, three, four years? It's been a few years now. And I forget if she shared or retweeted something. And based on the engagement that I get on Twitter, I'm not I've got a decent following on Twitter, but I'm not, it's not a huge, I'm not on there as much as I'm on Facebook. Anyways, um, so then I clicked through to her profile. I went to her website and it said, I'm working on the site. Check out my Facebook page. I went to her Facebook page and I got lost for a while because she had so many awesome design resources. She's a designer. And I was like, this is brilliant. I loved the way she was building a community on her Facebook page while she was building her site. We just started chatting, reached out somebody I consider a friend. I love what she's doing. I'm super happy to support her. But the point is she built her audience before the site was live. So don't use not having a website as an excuse. You just don't need to. There's too many other tools for it. And if you're not sure, take the time, reach out to somebody. You have no idea. Be willing to pay for an hour of someone's time for a little bit of direction, something but there, there's too many tools and resources out there. What you can absolutely do for free immediately is start growing an audience and connecting with people. 
um, bullet number three. These are not actually numbered in the post, but they are bullets. <laughs> Start creating content and connecting with people. Again, your con- the sooner you, you jump into content, whatever that looks like for you, written, audio, visual, info, you know, video, um, just uh, connecting with people, um, social, write a post on Facebook if you don't have a site up. I know it's not your content. Go to Medium. Medium is free. You know, there's all kinds of places that you can start producing while things are getting into play and, and getting some traction. See what fits. See what feels right. You know, it's kind of that, um, <laughs> I was saying Cinderella, right? How many, how many women tried on that slipper till it fit her? So you're gonna have to do the same thing. You're gonna have to look for your own Cinderella, I guess, through your, through what type of content works for you. But I got news. It, it's not going to turn over tomorrow, right? I'm getting a little preachy. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Um, but the next step, <laughs> then you're going to do that over and over and over again. You're going to keep creating content. You're going to keep connecting with people. You're going to, you're going to work on con- connecting for audience sake, right? I mean, not just reaching out for for conversations, but, you know, start participating in Facebook groups, participate, whether it's Twitter, leaving comments on sites, you know, retweeting, sharing somebody else's stuff. There's so much that you can do while you're building your machine, right? Okay. After you do that over and over and over again, and accept that it's just an ongoing process, pay attention to what's working. What what's driving traffic? And you guys, whether or not you love Google Analytics, it's brilliant. I I I go in and I look at stuff and then I leave. So I prefer having a plugin. I use the why can't I re- Monster Insights? Thank you by Syed Valky um, in my site. I like seeing you know top ten traffic sources. I can see like the top ten pieces of content that are driving traffic. Um, but but look at what's working. Do you have more than one lead magnet? If not, that's okay. But where are people opting in on your site? You know, how often are you getting, how many sub- people are scri- subscribing every day? That was 12 trips over one word. Um, look at that stuff. Look at where you find people more engaged. You know, like where I was referencing um, Facebook groups. What groups do you find pull you in? And if you haven't joined my content creators, shameless plug right now. Awesome group of people. It's on Facebook. Obviously, we're talking about content. Um, But take a look at what's working. And you guys do not need to whip out spreadsheets for this. You don't need to become, you know, a master, you know, at, at data. Just look, just start looking at stuff. You'd be surprised to see oh, wow, this piece of content drives more traffic than anything. I did that recently. And then I went and I upgraded the post because I was like, do I have a content upgrade in there? What's in the sidebar? Um, so, so take the time to do that. The next thing is to have conversations with people. And I mean actual conversations over Skype, on the phone, whatever works for you. You know, quit making assumptions about what you think people want or need from you. A little beverage break. Um, uh, another friend of mine has a Facebook group and and I'm I'm all about simplifying things too, which is funny because on one hand I'm trying to get a little bit more. What's the word I'm going to look for? I, I'm I'm starting to study things that are a little bit more advanced for me, right? Like moving over to Drip has all these really cool retargeting and automations and triggers and stuff you can do, but I'm totally baby stepping my way there. But. So if you're by simplifying things, you know how much easier it is to just hop on a call with somebody as opposed to setting up a survey, sending it to your list. And it's funny, right? You're thinking, yeah, but you're launching lead surveys. Totally different monster tool. Um, but you, you don't have to hope people are going to respond to it. When you start having a conversation, so she's got a Facebook group and I said, look, you've got a few people in your group who are pretty active. Say, hey, can we hop on a call? I would just love to, to see where you're at, what's going on. I'm trying to, to decide how I want to structure the growth of this group, what is going to help people most, whatever. M- most people are happy to hop on a call. I, You guys, I say it all the time. Reach out to me. I hop on Skype a lot with people just to connect. Um, and hopefully we'll be doing some sort of... I don't know, formal meetup or hangout or something in the fall. There's a lot of people in the Bay Area here um, I'd love to connect with. So 
start having conversations, you guys just get on the phone or whatever with people start actually talking to people, Um, ask people what they want and what they need. In an email, just directly, you know, a lot of people say, hey, simply reply to this, you'd be surprised how many people will reply, go to Quora.com, see what people are asking, you know, and and who's serving those people, you can kind of do that backwards engineering, right? So let's say you go to Quora, and you've got a question, um, I'm going to pick randomly, like you're a food blogger, you know, do you find that long recipe videos work better? Or, you know, what type of content, whatever. Okay, so you ask a question. Go see who has answered that and gotten the most upvotes. Then you go further and you go to that person's site and and just take a look at what's working. And and you can then go to their social profiles. I mean, it might sound a little bit like stalking, but it's modeling. See what's working for other people. Um, next is to share other people's stuff. Become the trusted expert. You guys, this does not take away from how awesome you are. You just become a trusted resource. And you know, I've gotten a little bit, I felt, I don't know if lazy is the right word, but with CoSchedule's ability to requeue and using missing letter for creating social campaigns, I'm like, oh, my calendar's kind of full, but it's really full with primarily my stuff, which is a total 180 than it used to be. But again, you build relationships by supporting other people, and you don't know where they're going to take you. Um, and, and they feel a little bit intangible sometimes. But when you just provide cool stuff to your audience, they just trust you more. It really works. Next, under building the machine is to produce. You got to hit publish, guys. I don't care if it's a live stream, if it's a blog post, if it's an email, if it's a YouTube video, if it's an infographic, if it's just a Canva image, whatever. Make it and put it out there. Okay. Next, you need to make offers. Oh, how I struggle <laughs> and, and did struggle. I've, I've gotten so much better. But you're never going to sell anything if you don't make an offer. And I know that sounds really goofy. But what will happen is you'll see some people might unsubscribe. Why can't I say that word today? Ah, oh, it's a good thing I'm doing a subscription tool <laughs> for, for creating subscribers. Um, but you have to put something out for sale, whether it's a, a coaching session, a product, an affiliate product, it doesn't matter. At some point, you guys, you got to make the offer. Otherwise, you're going to start, you'll you'll take work you don't want to do because it's bringing money in. You're listening to Kim's story of websites for years that she didn't want to do. And then getting into high ticket podcast production, because I thought, well, I can... It, that don't get me wrong. Podcasting was a ton of fun. I've also had some amazing website clients. Um, but you got to be be true to yourself. And the sooner you learn to produce and make offers, one, you're going to learn it doesn't kill you. And two, the less work you have to do that doesn't light you up, right? And then again, you're going to measure what worked after you've produced after you've made offers. You know, if you publish a post and you get a ton of engagement on it, huh, there's something there. When you talk from the heart versus maybe doing a super long form piece of content that's tutorial, it's like, you know, one's going to resonate more with the others, but you're also showing ah, there's a lot more to me than just being the how to person for free, right? Which I also did that for years. <laughs> and then last on building the machine first is that you're going to do all of that again. This is it, it's not a start and stop. There really isn't a, a finishing point. I guess I would say there's no, all right, I'm done. There's no being done in this space, really. <laughs> you can be done with something, but you're going to have to continue to produce. You're going to have to continue to make offers. You're going to have to continue to look at what's working. But if you just look at it, it's a process. Don't don't think in your head, oh my God, I've got X amount of blog posts to write this month. It's like, no, what do I got to do today? What do I have to do today, right? And if this doesn't look exciting to you or, or sound exciting to you, then you're totally missing the point. Because each of these elements builds on the other. And there's all kinds of magic that happens along the way. Um, I know this might seem a little esoteric, guys. I do want to, I'm going to give you something a little bit more tangible. Um, but it's it's those things that you can't see that you don't... I, I, hold on, I need a little bit more water. I have another example for you, but something just popped into my head. So look at, take a look at podcasting, right? <clears throat> and I'm not necessarily telling you to go start a podcast, but even being a guest on it. 
I, I am a huge believer in saying yes to those opportunities to be on someone else's platform or to use someone else's platform. And all of that happens through relationship building. So last week, uh, and I'll link to this in the show notes, um, I, well, the interview aired last, was it just last Thursday or Friday? I was on the Duct Tape Marketing Podcast with John Jantz. And that interview came because Phil Singleton, who is the co-author with John Jantz of SEO for Growth, which is an amazing book. And if you have not listened, I'll have to listen, link to that too. The interview with Phil was amazing. I, I mean, holy moly, talk about things you can implement immediately for content and SEO. But Phil and I had such an awesome talk and I'm like, I got to get him on other shows. And so I've sent a couple introductions and then he just said, oh, hey, I'd like to be on this show. I'm like, great, let me do that introduction too. Long story short, he told John I should be on a show. Um, he liked my story, who I am, all that good stuff. So we had a great conversation that aired last Friday or whatever. Saturday, I wake up to a strategy session payment. I was like, what? Well, and the funny thing is it's an older payment page because <laughs> the prices have gone up, but I was like, whatever. And I think I know where I linked that from. And so I went and part of that process when somebody pays, because still today, to this day, nothing beats notification of payment <laughs> when you're doing something else. And I've just had my coffee Saturday morning. I'm like, huh, somebody just paid me through PayPal. And I went and looked at his, um, the the form, right? It's not really an application because I don't do ongoing coaching now. They're all one-off sessions. But I was looking at his form and he said, I loved your interview on duct tape marketing. So he heard me on Friday and knew, and he said, I know I wanted to, to do some work with you. What the what, right? I had no, there, there's no way I could have foreseen that you guys. So there's all these little magical things that happen in here. When you start sharing someone else's content, when you start shining a light on someone else or giving somebody else the opportunity, and I don't care how idealistic or opportunistic or that's not the right word, but idealistic or esoteric. There we go. That's one of my favorites. This sounds, this shit works. You guys, it just, it does. It just works. Um, you're putting good out. It's going to come back to you. And, and that's not why you do it, right? You do it. It's that no such thing as a selfless good deed thing, right? <clears throat> but all of these things will build on each other. And when you, it's really fun when you can start connecting the dots. And so, again, I know some of this might seem really ambiguous. Uh, so I want to give you a few tangible things to sink your, sink your teeth into. Did I say that already? I may have. <laughs> It's so funny. I'm sitting here. I don't know if it's because I've got the fan off in here, the air is on, but it's like all of a sudden my eyeballs feel really tired. Um, so here we go. Here's my tangible, and I'm going to break it down for you. From May to June, you guys, I literally doubled my podcast downloads. I'm not kidding you. I had been trending. So, you know, the, the downloads I had had for May, it kept going up and it had been consistently going up. And I was like, okay, this is great. I'm going to hit this mark, right? And so then I don't, as soon as I had hit the same mark early on in June, I was like, what? Like, this is kind of crazy. So then looking today, I've probably more than doubled at today. Actually, by the time I'm recording this, I haven't refreshed my stats in a little bit. Um, it's been really fun. And guess what? The only thing that I have done differently over the last month is that I've added live streaming to my marketing mix not directly tied to the podcast, but I've done a few live streams on my WordPress chick Facebook page and it's totally paying off. So I think I, I need to get a straw, right? For this hydro flask. It's so funny when you hear flask, don't you guys think I'm sitting here swilling vodka or something, but no, it's just ice water. <laughs> All right, so here's my process for live streams. And take these with a grain of salt because this is all new territory for me. And I was super hesitant, which I know I've mentioned a few times in the show, about jumping into this because I know how much time, and I'm going to break this into, I'm going to give you guys more specific to time, how much time like doing the podcast does. And so, you know, time is the one thing we all only have so much of, right? It is, it is this definitive amount of resources. So, all right. So here are my steps and the, these are all also in a bullet list, but 
a cute little check mark with my short codes ultimate plugin. Um, so the first thing I do is I plan the live stream. <laughs> Woo, big science there, right? But I pick a date and I decide on the topic in advance. I don't ever see me being like, hey, let's hop on live and just shoot the shit. Just, and I'm not knocking that, but I'm not, <laughs> I've realized as I've gotten a little older, I'm not super great at um, last minute. I don't like spur of the moment. That was more what I was looking for. You know, and most of my friends and family know this. It's like, if we haven't planned it, eh, you know, don't, you know, no, it's probably not going to happen. Um, unless like if I've had an event to go to and I'm all dressed and ready, then I'm like, hey, I, I'm not wasting having done my hair and makeup. I got to go get dinner with a friend or something. So anyways, I plan ahead. I simply pick the date. I decide on the topic in advance. And I usually give myself truly about a week ahead. I, I want to know. Then I go and I create the event on my Facebook page. I share the date and the time with my audience with this, right? So we do the event on the Facebook page. I email my list and then I share it socially and in groups. This is just the initial, right? Then, and I do it a few times. So it's not just, and I used to do this all the time, you guys. I would create a piece of content. And I'd put it on my page and I'd eh, go about my stuff. And I never understood why my list was growing so slowly. <laughs> you have to put it in front of people frequently. I mean, when you think about, what did I say? Like there's like a billion people on Facebook every day. What is the likelihood that, I mean, you're going to just hit a fraction. And I'm just using Facebook as an example. Look at your emails. You can look at your opens. You know, you're only going to hit a fraction of the people who are subscribed or connected to you. So do it multiple times. Next is doing the live stream. And more than anything, when it comes to doing the live stream, so what I do is I will do a, a bullet list and outline. Um, because as I'm doing my little list, and it's just for me, and I'm not like putting it up on the screen or anything, but but I have a tendency to talk fairly quickly. <laughs> and so if I don't have in my head. And I'm trying not to approach live streams the same way as a podcast or a webinar, maybe. Although I am doing one tomorrow, which when this airs will be the day after. Um, I'm essentially doing a webinar as a live stream because of the engagement and the views. It, it's just there's such a stronger reach with live streaming right now. Um, but because I tend to talk quickly, I want to make sure that I give enough time for engagement and conversation on each point but that I stick with it. I don't think I want to do a whole lot more than 30 minutes. When I see live streams that are over an hour, I'm like, uh, I don't think I want to watch this right now. I want people to be able to digest it. Okay. Um, so then I do the live stream and I do, I engage with the audience as much as I can. Um, BeLive.tv just rolled out paid platforms for screen sharing. And so if you're, when you're testing something, maybe try something else. I don't know the, unless you're going to use like OBS or, um, Ecamm for Mac is like 30 bucks and you can do screen sharing and the quality is brilliant, but you cannot do two people. So if it's just you and your Mac user, I'd go with Ecamm. Um, for BeLive though, what's cool is that you can do some branding now. You can display people's questions. So there's a lot of pulling the audience in to the live stream with BeLive. Okay, where am I at? Um, so I do the live stream and then I pull the live stream and the comments into my site as a post. And I do this with Simple Social Press. This is Hanny Moore's plugin, but it'll automatically create a post in your site and it keeps it in draft mode, um, but it'll create a post with your live stream title and it drops the video in. It also pulls in all of the comments in Facebook. It, pu it pulls them all into your site as blog post comments. So uh, the live stream I did where I was celebrating, and I'm going to talk about this, the uh, episode 150 of the podcast, I think I pulled in 68 comments. That's not too bad. You know, again, I don't know the the algorithm magic that happens there with Google, but I know that that helps. So then I write a post. I do like a recap, right? I'm not just going to do the date and whatever. It's like I try to pull in a fresh take on having done the live stream. And so I'll do a post. They're not super long. It's not long form content. The goal is to get them to watch the, the, the live stream. Um, but then I, I do like takeaways, feedback from the attendees, maybe, you know, one opportunity I see for this is you can do, you could drop in a Q&A into the post, even though 
the comments might be there. Who wants to read 68 blog comments, right? So if you could go through and recap the comments that were asked during the live stream as like a, you know, Q&A within the body of the post, gold. All right, so then I do the post. Then I create a social sharing campaign for the post. I go into Snappa and I make an image for Twitter and Pinterest and Facebook and Instagram, although I'm horrible about going and sharing Instagram, even though I have Grum, right? Grum, yeah, for scheduling. Um, Then I publish the post. Then I email my list again the next day to go to the post and to view the live stream. And so since it's pulling directly from Facebook, I am assuming that it's going to count as a view on Facebook, kind of like if you embed a YouTube video, it's going to count as a YouTube view, right? So I've done that. And then last step is I repurpose by sharing the live stream to YouTube with Hanny's other tool, repurpose.io. You guys, and that is just the beginning. At some point, I see being able to pull snippets from the live stream and sharing those as well, whether it's audio or video or taking snippets from that with with still images or text or quotes or something and doing like a different type of a video, right? Um, th- there's a lot that you can do with this. Could you pull the audio and do it as a podcast? Absolutely. Um, I don't see myself ever doing a podcast episode on live streaming because I want the content to be uninterrupted, I guess is a better way to say it. And I think, although I don't know, It'd be different, I think, if somebody could hop, you can add people to be live, by the way, if you want to let somebody come on camera and ask a question, you can do that. But I think it might be a little distracting. Um, So there's a lot of opportunities for doing more than with this. Um, But, (laughs) you know, I, I will reiterate that this whole process is probably, I don't know, a good four or five hours. So you figure I've got the live stream, which the last couple were close to an hour, you know, good 30, 45. No, the, the, the one where I celebrated, I did a giveaway. So I tested a giveaway to celebrate him having hit episode 150. It was, I don't know, a week and a half after the episode aired. Um, but I reached out to some of my friends in the space, Beaver Builder, Hanny, it was great, Power Pack, uh, Gordon, my partner with Lead Surveys, they've got plugins, and they donated some licenses for their tools. So ton of fun, tons of engagement, right? And obviously doing giveaways, you know, people are going to get more involved, but it's it's the encouragement of when people get to see their question pop up, or you get to talk directly to them. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> the crazy thing is, you guys, they kind of wear me out. It's kind of like, I can tell you, as soon as I'm done with this podcast recording, I've got to go check out for a little bit. Mind you, I had an interview before this, but my brain's a little tired today. Um, the showing up live and, and and it it takes a different level of focus, I guess I should say, than when you're just, you know, writing or chilling, doing your thing. Um, but here's what I know about live streaming. Streaming. Wow, you guys, <laughs> you would think I've been drinking, right? That's something besides water. Um, just uh-huh. having done a few, here's my thoughts. First, if you don't have an audience, it's going to take longer to get traction. I get it, you guys. I already had an audience. But but keep in mind, my Facebook page isn't huge. I have less than 6,000 likes. I mean, for as long as I have been online, and I started with Facebook, WordPress chick has, is nine years old this summer, um, you would think it would be more like 50,000, right? Just goes to show you six of one. Um, but just stick with it. It might take longer to get traction, but that's okay. Totally show up and engage with the people that are there. And when you put it out there to the world and you share it all over, you're going to be surprised how much quicker people show up. Have a plan. It's okay to keep it fun, but respect people's time. You know, (laughs) I will use this term and I hope it doesn't offend anybody, but a friend and I were talking and she said, God, some of these B lives just feel like circle jerks, right? where people are just hopping on and I'm, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. Look at what I'm doing. I'm awesome. Look at me, look at me, look at me. And it's like, I, I'm like, what are, what, what is the purpose of this? And I'm not saying not, you can't have fun, right? And you can't engage and have conversations, but someone maybe has three or four shows they do a week and they're all ones on gardening, ones on digital marketing, ones on this. And 
there's not a judgment in doing that. I don't have the bandwidth for it, one. But two, I want people to come back. I want them to go, ah, it was a good 30 minutes spent. You know, I've been on webinars where I feel like I want my time back. That kind of sucked, right? So um, keep it fun, but respect people's time. Uh, You have to share, again, you guys, this is starting to sound redundant, but you really need to share that you're doing it. Share it over and over and over again. Email, Email people, share it socially, ask your friends, hey, I'm going live, would you mind sharing this? If you're in a Facebook group, find out you know, what are the rules? Can I share this live stream I'm doing? I did that in content creators. I There's a lot of people in the group that are starting to do live streaming. And so we have one day a week where the, you can share content. And I said, hey, if you've got a live stream, pop it in the day you're going live to see if we can get you some more traction to get you some more love, whatever. Um, because that's more time sensitive than a piece of published content. So see, another bonus to content creators. <laughs> um, but but share it over and over and again, you guys don't don't be shy about that. Stay engaged with your audience, include them as much as possible. Um, and here's something you can do. Think about it this way: if you have people on your live stream that are engaging in conversation with you, and maybe you know them from somewhere else, see if there's a way that you can pull that in. So uh, maybe you've had an offline conversation, or you've read a piece of their content, or you guys are in a group together. Give them that little extra shout out, like. Oh, like, okay, I've my friend Deanna, right? And and we talk often and I'll bring that up. Oh, Deanna and I were talking about this. A great example today. We were on Skype and she said, Hey, I've got a suggestion on this page that was mine. And I was like, Oh my God, thank you. She gave me the direct link to the Facebook event for a live stream as opposed to just my Facebook page. She said I would link to that instead. And I was like, Oh my gosh, thank you. I meant to ask you that. And so having another set of eyes is super helpful. And so like giving her a shout out when I'm live streaming, because she's dug way more into this than I am, than I have. And so, you know, by by looping people in on a more personal, intimate level, it's it's just a closer knit feeling, right? Um, Then of course, you need to reshare the live stream after you've done it. And again, I know these are redundant to the things I do versus the things I know, (laughs) but I'm just telling you. Uh, Facebook loves video. Just hashtag, just saying. They just, they love video. I would be hard pressed uh, to argue that they're, uh, it's going to take a while for them to take on YouTube, but man, there's a whole bunch of of stuff. And I I just see them putting more time and resources and energy to, to video. So it works. And, you know, maybe you prefer YouTube. I think there's other benefits to live streaming on YouTube. You can embed a YouTube video while you're live streaming onto a page of your own and put a buy now button under it, right? I mean, that's a great call to action versus sending them somewhere. If they're watching you live on a page on your site and the button's right there, it's just easier. Um, It's super fun. It really is a ton of fun. If you do like that engagement piece now, for those of you who are like, I don't ever want to do live streaming. Cool. Cool. Don't (laughs) do what feels natural and is easiest for you because you're going to get the best results from the things that feel right. Um, And I also know that I need to slow down (laughs) to my point of talking a tad fast, which you guys know from listening to me, um, taking the time to pause, taking the time to ask questions, letting people respond, you know, keeping things moving. I think there is because there's kind of a lot going on. When, especially if you're going to be doing screen sharing and you're not just talking, you're navigating chat, like with questions coming in, you're navigating what you're doing on the screen. Can everybody hear you, see you, all that good stuff. Why do I think this stuff is working well for me? It's consistency. You know, again, I know I've got an audience, but it's how I've been showing up in front of my audience consistently. Um, I am on Facebook daily. I do share other people's content. I stay in communication with my audience and I'm constantly producing. Some of it's great. Some of it, not so much. It's all right. I I do it anyways. And as a reminder, this happened after 150 episodes. And so the, you know, I get close to 100 people live. I think the first live stream I did, I had like 135 people or something. And I know you guys, I'm starting out with maybe a step ahead. 
But, you know, look, let me loop back right to the beginning of this episode where I mentioned the new podcast from, from Thrive Themes. Shane also said something that really resonated with me. And I am totally going to pair a phrase here because I, I may have written it down, but he said, I like doing things that are difficult, but it, because it gives me the advantage. Most people won't stick with it if it's difficult. So he wasn't referring to things being technically difficult. He was referring to things that take time and energy and need to be done consistently before seeing any sort of ROI. You guys, every piece of content you create can build on itself. And, you know, I had an interview before this with Kyle Gray, who's written the book Story Engine. It's all about content. He helped the, with the content strategy for WP Curve. So that episode will be airing eh, in a couple months, actually. But I'm going to be talking about the book and Kyle a lot. And this is just it. Th- these are all these foundations, these fundamental things that will pay off for you in the in the long run, right? And they pay off because they compound that, that you start linking content to other content and you're repurposing it and doing all these things. But when you look at the the process I go through live with a live stream or a podcast, right? I'm taking an hour to record this. It took me probably two hours to write the post. I find the image, then I have to create the social campaign. It has to be edited. Um, my daughter's now editing for me. Um, and by the way, so if you need a good deal on editing, holler. <laughs> she's a film student. So she's doing my editing now. And then I need to go in and then I'll queue it with co schedule. And then I'll write an email about it. So you look at the time, but you guys, this is the work. It's not about like, what else are you supposed to be doing? Right. And it's like, I get it if you've got client work or whatever, but this is the stuff that needs to be done. It's kind of like, you know, if you're a website builder, you wouldn't just be like, oh, okay, well, the logo and the site design is done. So now I don't want to do the rest of it. You got to friggin' build the site. You got to put the plugins in, you got to put the content in, you got to test it, you got to do the browser testing, the responsiveness. You have to do all those other things to make sure it's working, right? So when you look at how much work went into this live stream, how many people do you think are going to read that and be like, or listen to it and say, I don't want to do it. And hey, and no, like I said, no judgment, but there, if, if it's not your thing, I get that. But if you don't want to do it because it just feels like a lot of work, then you're going to be running uphill the rest of your, I'm just going to say life. That's a tad dramatic, but it's going to be an uphill battle for you forever. All of this stuff takes work. All of it, you guys. I was on Skype with Deanna earlier today and she was like, I am committed to getting these email sequences done for this lead magnet that she's been working on for a while. She recorded an audio, she had to produce, she she had to re-record. I mean, she's done all the work and she's like, "I'm, I'm getting this done. And each thing that you see through to the end that you can produce and hit publish for, um, you know, you're, you're going to get the results. So this is the machine, you guys, this, this is the foundation. And I've shared with you some of the stuff that I've been through over the last few years with, you know, spending a lot of money on high ticket masterminds and, and looking for these high ticket offers and stuff. It, I had amazing adventures. I met amazing people. This is so much more who I am and how I move through the world. It's so effortless. And and when I say effortless, I mean, it doesn't feel work. I'm a wee bit tired this afternoon. Um, I just need to stop talking for a while. <laughs> but it's fun. It really makes my heart happy when I'm like, wow, I get to dictate my days now. Um, and And being scared <clears throat> about stepping into something new. But knowing... Okay, so this is, I'm going to wrap this up here with you guys. And so depending on, well, no, this is actually going live the day after. I am doing a live stream webinar. That's what I'm calling it uh, on Facebook to preview lead surveys. And so if you're listening to this, what do you mean if you're listening to this? I'm I'm totally having a conversation with myself. Obviously, you're listening to this. You can go to leadsurveys.com. Wrong, wrong. This is how tired I am. Leadsurveys.io forward slash presale. Um, I'm going to have the post with the replay on my site as well. So lead surveys, I've talked about it, but it's a it's a 
I've got a demo of it now, right? You're going to be able to see what a lead survey looks like. This is a way to segment subscribers as they opt into your site. You're still going to give them a lead magnet. You're going to segment them into groups. You're going to start finding out who is visiting your site, what they want from you from day one. There's going to be all kinds of magic that happens after that in terms of conditional logic and retargeting. Everything is still being built. The app exists. <laughs> um, tying all the pieces together is is in the works right now, but we are opening the cart officially uh, for founders. Because what I'm going to do is we are going to go through an eight week course and one on, I'm doing a one on one with everybody. So I will really be tired of talking um, come September. But what we're going to do is I'm going to look at where you are with your list, right? So we'll hop on a call. Who Who is your um, email service provider? How big is your list? What are you doing? How do you, you know, drive generate leads, all that kind of stuff. So we'll have this conversation. All of those calls are going to be recorded. So you'll get the recording. So those are all going to happen through July. And then we're going to go through this eight week course on growing your audience and building your list. So you're creating tagging frameworks. Um, if you're not using an email service provider that, that offers tagging or some method might be called something different. Um, I'm going to recommend you you go somewhere else. But if not, we're going to figure out the best structure for you. Um, so you're going to go through, we're going to look at your emails. So it's an eight week course, there's eight modules. Um, there's going to be an analysis, a private group, we're going to look at your lead magnets, we're going to look at your email sequence, we're going to look at the copy, we're going to look at the frequency, we're going to look at are you you know, you have the scripts on your site for I'm, I'm making this sound really exciting. Huh? <laughs> My eyeballs are getting so tired. But we're going to look at tagging, right in terms of like Google Tag Manager, do you are you tracking all of those things. So the point of that, and this is just for the founders. So there's going to be a discount on the lifetime of your account. So I want to say it's 30% less than the tier one pricing. Um, and then you will have first access and it, there'll be individual onboarding. You guys, I, the goal with this is really to build a community with this product. I'm not interested in a SaaS that is just a machine running in the background. Like our heart and souls are into this. And so we want our founders to be our case studies. We'll publish posts about you. <coughs> Excuse me. Results. We want your input, your feedback on what you need, what's working, what's not. Huh. So that's what lead surveys is. So depending on when you're listening to this, um, because obviously this podcast will exist well after this, um, but we are opening the doors Wednesday, June 28th, 2017. Um, And then within 10 days, once we hit our founder limit, because there is no way I can do one-on-one calls and individual onboarding with a boatload of people without starting to cry or get a headache. Um, so depending on when you're listening to this, you can also go to leadsurveys.io and we will be open to the public uh, early fall. And I don't have a date for you, Shane. Uh, I almost said Shane. I'm looking at my post where I was talking about Shane. Gordon Orlick is the brilliant coding genius behind everything, Gordon and his team. And um, so he would probably shoot me from across the world where he is if I gave a date that um, was that I can't, but you're going to get the inside track the whole way along. So that's what lead surveys is. And you guys, I'm scared. It's, I'm excited. I'm nervous. You know, this has been eight months to get us here. It's been a process and a journey. And now I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to share it. I'm, I'm passionate about it. I believe in the product. The rest is out of my control. Um, it's, I'm just going to show up and know this. Probably the next solo show, I will share with you the results. I will talk to you guys about how it went, what worked, what didn't, um, what I would do differently. Although at this point, the thought of like (laughs) going there is tiring me out. Um, But I'm really excited. So again, you know, depending on where you're listening, not where, when you're listening. Good night, Kim. (laughs) Uh, When you're listening to this, you know, you can check out the presale or you can go to just leadsurveys.io. I'll have links in the show notes. As always, guys, thanks for listening. I love you tons. And you know what? I do have one favor for you uh, to request of you, I should say. Let me know how you feel about this content. You know, I think a lot of podcasting is going in a lot of different directions. And 
some people want, you know, step-by-step instructions, or you're tired of the interview style, I would just like to know what what's working for you. This is hit home. I mean, I know I'm getting super chatty. We're probably over, you know, I'm a few minutes over an hour. So I'm going to wrap this up. But I'd love your feedback. I It always means the world to me. I love hearing from you guys. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Like, hop on, say hello, re- reply to an email. You know, I will have conversations on Skype. If you're looking for coaching or strategy, that is a paid offer. Um, or join content creators. Just face, just search it on Facebook. All righty. Doyle is out. You guys are awesome. Uh, that's it. Have a fabulous day. And I will catch you next week. <laughs>